what is up folks and in today's video we'll be shining a spotlight on DevOps. Why I think starting a career in DevOps in 2026 is super exciting. Firstly we have to ask ourselves what is DevOps? Now DevOps is a set of practices, tools and cultural philosophy that combines software development, so developers, and IT operations, so ops, to automate and integrate the processes between them enabling faster and more reliable software delivery. Hence the words dev and ops. Now if you're familiar with DevOps, you've most likely come across this DevOps lifecycle image. Basically developers being in charge of creating, planning, packaging and verifying code and then operations team doing release, configuration, monitoring and managing infrastructure. Now, I often see questions around the future of DevOps and articles such as DevOps is dead. I see a lot of articles and posts and lots of people saying DevOps is dead and will be replaced by automation and AI. Firstly, all of this fluff and word salad makes me more excited about DevOps than ever. I have a lot to say about this that will completely change your view on DevOps, SRE and platform engineering. And I'll give you some pointers on where you should aim to get the most out of your career. We have a lot to cover, so without further ado, let's go. Now here is the reality of the situation. Most companies are doing DevOps wrong. In most, if not all companies, DevOps are just rebranded system administrators or infrastructure people. Many companies simply brand their positions to hire ever-changing popular trendy job titles. First it was SRE, then DevOps, now it's platform engineering. Now don't get me wrong, when you compare the definitions of these three different roles, they do have different different focuses and different meanings. And this video is not about comparing them. But if we take a look at the word DevOps, but if we take a look at the word DevOps, DevOps has never been a role to begin with. DevOps is a culture, a software engineering methodology which aims to integrate the work of development teams and operations teams by facilitating a culture of collaboration and shared responsibility. In the traditional IT model, Developers wrote and changed code. Then they threw it over the wall for the IT operations folks to deploy and monitor the servers. When the code breaks, the operation folks blame the devs and devs can't see the infrastructure, so they blame the ops. Then the DevOps culture was born and this is all about dismantling the wall. And it's a culture about building and providing seamless processes for writing code, building, testing, deployment, observability, create this feedback loop where developers get insights into what they've deployed and enough control. And you'll see where we're going with this in 2026. Essentially, DevOps was all about empowering developers and adding agility to software development processes. And over time, companies have turned this into a role. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. This is because we want engineers to facilitate this role. Therefore, the role of DevOps was born. And as DevOps evolved, and developers had a little bit more control over development and production environments, we realized that developers don't like dealing with infrastructure. Then, platform engineering was born. Platform engineering is all about abstracting away the infrastructure. So this allows infrastructure people, or DevOps engineers, or SREs, to start building a platform. And by doing this, they basically provide services to developers, like CI-CD pipelines, places to ease easily build and deploy code, processes to deploy to places like Kubernetes, observability and monitoring dashboards so developers can see their applications, basically becoming self-serviced. But notice in this diagram that the DevOps philosophy does not go away. We've just rebranded the engineers to give them more direct focus. And this is what makes DevOps engineering so exciting for the future, especially with emerging technologies. If you take a look at DevOps, SRE, and platform engineering, or any role for that matter that touches infrastructure and IT, they all involve the same fundamental skills. We start with something like Git, 
JSON, YAML, Linux, open source networking, containers, Kubernetes, cloud, infrastructure as code, automation, CI, CD, and more. And this is why it's so exciting. If you know these fundamental skills, you have the ability to rebrand yourself wherever the industry is going. For example, AI is not replacing these fundamentals. In fact, in order to implement AI, you need all of these fundamentals in place. Things like LLMs run in containers. Large language models need servers and infrastructure. They need compute. They use things like CPU, memory, and disk. So they need an understanding of infrastructure and performance. They need orchestration. They can run on Linux. They can run in the cloud they're going to need SecOps. The same security will apply to AI. They'll need integration with applications and software. They're gonna need deployment pipelines and they're gonna need observability. If you learn these skills, you'll become irreplaceable. These DevOps skills underpin the foundation of all IT engineering going into next year. Basically, all IT engineering starts with source control and Git, especially tools like IDEs for writing scripts and code. I see this as the baseline for all engineering, which is why it's part of the ultimate DevOps roadmap that I'm currently building, which you can find on my website. Link in the description. Software developers, front-end, back-end, DevOps, platform engineers, even AI all needs Git and source control. They're also going to need fundamental understanding of operating systems and things like Linux. We're going to need to operate in the world of HTTP and web applications, as well as CI, CD and automation, Linux containers and more. These are all foundations of IT. Doesn't matter if you're a developer or an infrastructure person. Doesn't matter if you're an SRE, DevOps or platform engineering. Software still needs to be built packaged, tested, you need quality assurance, security scanning, graceful deployments, you're going to need cloud, compute, observability, and the feedback cycle is important. And with the rise of things like AI, these skills are now needed more than ever. DevOps skills become a key fundamental part of the rise of platform engineering. You cannot build a great platform without understanding how to implement the key DevOps philosophies. Learn and focus to empower development teams. Use the fundamental skills we just looked at to provide developers with UIs and APIs that allows them to build, test, and deploy and monitor faster than ever. Instead of being the ivory tower that tries to enforce things and slowing down agility and slowing down deployments, deploy faster, which means fail faster. And if you have great observability and monitoring in place, this creates a solid feedback loop. And if your deployment pipelines are faster and more reliable, developers can roll out changes quicker. This means developers can roll forward instead of rolling backwards. When teams embrace failure, it helps them learn and build confidence, keep changes smaller, and deploy faster. It gives developers more confidence in what they're building and gives them more confidence in the infrastructure as well. This means more deployments per day and ultimately means the whole company becomes more productive. Cloud native architecture and Kubernetes is now an industry standard for running applications at scale. This puts DevOps engineers in a unique position because they can build, provision, deploy infrastructure and applications to multi-cloud and hybrid environments using infrastructure as code tools like Terraform and container orchestration tools like Docker and Kubernetes. This is a super exciting place to be. And another exciting point to discuss is that all of the things we've just discussed previously provide a fundamental foundation for AI and automation. Yes, AI ops will replace mundane repetitive tasks like certain monitoring and observability task, incident response and root cause analysis, but they don't replace the engineer. AI will elevate your current position. You will become an AI orchestrator and provide the guidelines and boundaries, the rules, the prompts for AI to become effective and become your assistant, which means you as an engineer can now focus on governance, architecture, system design, and validating AI outputs. You can leverage AI to work 10 times faster on regular tasks. One thing I find really exciting about the DevOps landscape is that it allows us to branch out and 
learn programming languages. As an engineer in infrastructure, you're not generally forced to learn a programming language. And a lot of people are hesitant. They think that is more of a software development thing. But since DevOps, SRE and platform engineering involves a lot of automation, programming languages becomes the glue between different systems. Programming languages are an important skill set to have. It allows you to diversify your skill set even more. You can focus on things like Python. Python is the automation king. It's simple, readable, and it has a massive library ecosystem. It's great for data, AI, and ML, machine learning, automation scripting, API, and cloud. We also have Golang. Go is the infrastructure builder. Great for tooling development. Great for tooling development. Infrastructure as code, Docker, Terraform, Kubernetes, and open source. Microservices, API, and performance. We have Bash or PowerShell. This is operating system native scripting and automation. Great for things like CI CD pipelines and configuration management. Learning a programming language will boost your seniority in your role. It allows you to integrate well with other systems, including AI. And AI tools also allows you to learn programming faster. It allows you to pivot your role a little bit more towards software development or platform engineering, depending on where you want to go, even data and machine learning. Another super exciting pathway through the DevOps space is with SecOps or security operations. That is a strategic approach that integrates IT and security teams to protect an organization from cyber threats. When things like cloud native and Kubernetes forms the de facto standard for deploying applications and platforms, anyone can propose to install things using simple Helm install commands. You can install an entire platform doing this. And the risk is if you combine this with the rise of agentic AI and AI tooling, you massively increase your attack surface. Companies are doing a lot of experimentation in this space. If you combine all of this AI fluff and profit seeking, companies, especially cloud providers, are pressuring companies to use more AI tools and using all sorts of new technology and platforms where security becomes an afterthought. This means that ultimately you'll have a gigantic gigantic rise in the attack surface when it comes to cybersecurity. Think of storage like S3 buckets that are not protected, public endpoints that are not protected, lack of passwords, API keys and OAuth sign-in, more service accounts in the cloud that don't have their credentials managed properly, lack of secret management processes and secret automation, lack of API key rotation protocols, more vulnerabilities, lack of security scanning in some of these new areas, more data breach articles on the news, which means more career opportunities for you. And this could even elevate your role into an architecture position. Now, hopefully this video made you as excited as I am about the future of DevOps, SRE and platform engineering. Check out the link down below to the ultimate DevOps roadmap and you can follow the progress of this roadmap on Instagram. Check the links down below. Remember, if you liked the video, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you want to support the channel even further, check the join button down below to become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.